Hi, my name is Corey Dunnick, and I am the director of the Patch Test Clinics at the University of Colorado, Denver. And I have the pleasure today of talking with Katherine Heim. She is a regulatory toxicologist for NIPARA. So I know in the European Union um, developed a nickel directive. They adopted it in 1994 to limit the amount of nickel uh, released in everyday items that have prolonged contact with the skin, um, such as watches or jewelry or belt buckles. And do you think that this nickel directive has been successful in Europe? I certainly think that the regulation has come a long way and has certainly decreased the prevalence of patch test positive individuals, so the number of individuals that are allergic to nickel. Now whether that number has decreased for the reactions in people that are already aller are allergic, we would certainly expect that, but that is not what's being measured. So the numbers that are decreased are the numbers in, certainly we see it in the young population, which are the population that would have been exposed to articles since this nickel directive came into place. The problem is, is that there is still a non-negligible amount of prevalence of nickel allergy in the European Union. And part of this can be explained from the surveys that have been done to show that not all of the articles are compliant with this nickel restriction, that they've gone out and looked in different shops at these different jewelry items in particular and seen that they release above that limit. The other problem is that the communication potentially could be an issue and that a public campaign to really inform people because the enforcement isn't necessarily there as, as well as it could be, that could help. One of the things that the problems is, is that the enforcement is difficult because of the time and money that it costs the governments to do. So I think education as well as increased enforcement could really help decrease this prevalence even further within the European Union. And certainly those, the public education could help worldwide to decrease that prevalence of nickel allergy. So it sounds like the um, regulation of nickel content has been successful, but the enforcement um, of those policies isn't cheap and it's not 100% um, complied with. So it's not a perfect solution Correct. to um, decreasing nickel allergy in the population. So I was wondering, are there other strategies other than regulation to help prevent nickel sensitization in the general population um, in the United States or other areas that might be helpful? Certainly, I think the communications is a key. We really, we can, we can put forth regulations and things like that, but without informing not just the consumers, not just the people that are allergic to nickel, but the other stakeholders in the process, the people that are making the jewelry that may be releasing this nickel, the dermatologists who may not understand the difference between re nickel release and nickel content, the um, metallurgists who may not understand exactly what are happening, it is happening in the clinics where these reactions are taking place and don't have that direct patient contact. You know, we have, there's a nickel release test that's a standardized test that was developed in Europe to help enforce this regulation, but that test needs to be looked at perhaps in the context of what the clinical reactions are. And so I think also the producing industry, things like that, all of the stakeholders, anyone who is affected by nickel allergy can certainly benefit from having additional information so that we can have appropriate and effective use of the materials and also regulation where needed or enforcement of the regulation um, to help decrease that nickel prevalence. Right, so it sounds like education is a really important component of decreasing nickel sensitization, that regulation can only do so much with limited resources. 